when a Jew does an Aveda, does God really get angry? Is it possible that after all these years and all of the disadvantages that we have, that when today a Jew does an Aveda, that God can actually get angry? It's not possible if, if there's any justice, if the Ebeshter is fair and reasonable, it, he can't be angry. He has no reason to be angry. On the contrary, today, I mean, I don't know what in past generations, when you lived in Eretz Yisrael with a base Hamigdash, with Nevi'im, and you did an Aveda, then, then God was angry. Makes sense. In my house, after I just finished telling you and sending you a Navi and you just saw the base Hamigdash with all the miracles <coughs> and you do an Aveda, makes me angry. But today, anything we do can make the Ebeshter angry? It's not possible. What's he angry about? That a person who's been in Golis for 2,000 years, who never saw a Beis HaMikdash, who never saw a Navi, who didn't, wasn't there at, uh, at Kriyas Yamsuf, and wasn't there at Matan Teva, forgot to do a mitzvah, this makes the Ebeshter angry? Come on. That's a chil Hashem. You're making God sound like a monster. So what does happen today when you do an Aveda? It hurts him. He is hurt. He is not angry. But we're also hurt. That's right. I think we're angry. So, realistically speaking, the tshuva today is not the same as tshuva in the past. Tshuva today really is tshuva mi'ahava, not from Yira. In Siddhas, in the early generations, it said, tshuva mi'ira is realistic for most people. Tshuva mi'ahava is only for tzaddikim. Not anymore. Today, tshuva mi'ira doesn't exist. The only tshuva there is, is tshuva mi'ava. Which means, the tshuva is, I just want him back. That's not yira. Because we know, you have to know, the Ebeshter is not angry at you. He's angry at himself. Why? Well, aren't there any God there? For all of the above reasons. <laughs> If you know what you're going to do, and you know the results are going to be... They wish that is angry at himself. Later, ...then why would you be upset at yourself knowing the results and that you're making the best choice? The, it, it means he blames himself for creating this mess, for creating the Yetzirah, for creating the Avedas. That means that he doesn't believe in himself. Does it look like a mess to him? So you're becoming his psychiatrist. <laughs> I don't think it makes sense to me. Uh -huh. Anger is fear. So the person that you're believing in, that you're fearing in, that's that you're dealing with, doesn't is upset at. Sorry, not person. Sorry, the thing, the god, whatever. He's upset with himself because he put you through hell. Huh? I don't get it. What? Does it look like a mess? Are you are you guys gonna treat your husbands like this too? <laughs> No, I'm serious about this. I'm serious about this. If your husband comes and says, I'm sorry what happened, I'm taking the blame, you would say, you need a psychiatrist? <laughs> the, blame, the blame is fine, but the anger, why anger? The blame is a good husband. There's no question that the Abish that blames himself. 
And that's why he's asking us to come and be forgiven. We're not even asking him to forgive us. He's asking us to come Yom Kippur so that he can forgive us. Why? Because it's his fault. So it says in the davening, a hundred different times in the Yom Kippur davening, we refer to the Ebishter as Neisei Oven. And you give me the Sarachaman. Neisei Oven, which means he tolerates our sins. That's the simple meaning. The deeper meaning is he carries the sin. It's his fault. So why does he forgive us? Because he's Neisei Oven. Because he takes the blame. How could he not? How do we know that he does? Huh? How do we know that he does? Is it okay to think that if, when you're dominating that Hashem, you have to forgive me because it's your fault? You are forgiving me. Not you have to. How do we know this? How do we know it's almost right? like... Huh? It's... No, how do we know that God... It's almost like... Let, 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 listen, listen, listen. It's almost like we're doing the Abishter a favor by letting him forgive us. So, so the, the nature of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur has to change from scary, depressing times to happy and enjoyable times. We do tshuva today not because we've been bad. That's a ridiculous idea. We do tshuva today because we want to be closer to Hashem. It's his fault, it's my fault, I did this sin, that sin, I don't care. That's not the point. The point is, I want him back. Shuva means get him back. Get him back from what? From his hurt. So when you do an Aveda and it hurts him, he, he backs away. Get him back. That's Shuva. So what should you do practically to prepare for the Yomim Narayim, which are quickly approaching? Yomim Noiroyim. Does that sound scary? <laughs> awesomely good, not awesomely scary. When somebody says about Elul, what do we know about Elul? Elul is the time when the Melech comes out into the Sada. Do you, do you appreciate, do you hear what that means? A king comes out to the field to see his people. Why? See, the marshal is a king. There's a reason for that. A king comes out to the field, not a president. The president comes out to the field because he wants votes. <laughs> not interested in you. He wants votes. A king doesn't get voted in. So why would a king come out to the field? The mushal, the mushal of a melech basada is such a romantic one. If you just listen, the king comes out to the field to tell you that you're welcome into the palace. I mean, do you hear what this, what's going on here? The Alter Rebbe says that the Ebershter is coming out into the field to make sure that you know that you're welcome in the palace. Why does he have to tell you you're welcome? Because you don't think you're deserving. Because you think out in the field, your hands are dirty, your boots are dirty, you're not dressed properly, you can't go into a palace. So the king comes to you when you're not dressed properly and tells you that he wants you to come to the palace. How badly does he want you to come to the palace? 
How badly does he want you to come to the palace? If there's a doubt that maybe you won't come, he can't stand it. So he comes out to make sure. So Elul basically means not you better get your act together or you're going to get it. That's so un... certainly un chassidish. It's not even Jewish. I don't know where that comes from. Elul means the Abish that is not going to take a chance that you might not show up on Rosh Hashanah. So he comes out to the field for an entire month to tell you over and over again, yes, I want you to come to my palace. And you say, but, but I don't know anything, but I'm not good enough, but I'm not holy, but I haven't done tshuva. And the Ebrishter says, I'm not asking you to do anything, just come. Why? Because I need you there. So tshuva really means, can the Ebrishter's request get to you, or are you completely stone-hearted? If you know that the Ebrishter is inviting you, th does that mean anything to you? Or you're indifferent? Tshuva means, if he invites me, I'm going. If I find out I'm welcome, I'm going. The uh, only reason I hesitate is because I don't think he wants me. I don't think I belong there. I'm a sod. And the Rebbe connects it uh, uh, unbelievably with a posuk about a woman who gets raped. The posuk says that if a woman is raped in the city and she's engaged, Naira Mu'irasa, then they both have to die. They're both guilty. Why? The, the guy and, and the girl. Why? Because she was in the city. How come nobody heard her crying? How come she didn't scream? However, im basodem if the man found her in the field, then only he dies. She is innocent. Because we assume that she did cry and scream, but ain she Allah, there was no one there to help her. So the so the girl doesn't get punished, only the guy gets punished. So the Hasid says like the Rebbe says like this. Im if he finds her in the field, what does the word sada remind you of? Melech basada. So if a girl is engaged, basada, and something terrible happens to her, then there's no question that so'ako hanayra. Of course she, she screamed and she cried. But ayin meishiyala. Ayin means the Ebeshter himself comes to help her. That's Melech Basada. The king comes out to the field to the girl who he is engaged to and tells her that no matter what happened, he will help her get to the palace because he knows that she's crying. The Abishtan knows that deep down inside we really want to be good. We want to be Jews. We want to be proper Jews. But who's going to believe me? Who's going to believe me? Who knows how I'm crying or screaming deep down inside? So the simple meaning is, Ain she Allah. No one can help her. Nobody knows. Nobody hears her. But Ayin, the Abish did himself, Meishi Allah. The Abish did himself comes out into the Sada to make sure that she knows that she's innocent and is invited to the palace.